This week's winter weather may have delayed opening night for a theater of Memphis's latest production, but as they say, the show must go on. A Raisin in the Sun opens Sunday, and we are live with its award-winning director, Jared Johnson, this morning. Jared, I love you, and I'm so sad that, <laughs> that this snow got in between us. Hi. Hi, Hi, Jared. How Hi. Hi. <laughs> so Sorry. Good. Good Sorry. To be with you. I'm fangirling a little. Okay, okay. so let's just move on. All right, so for those who may not be familiar with The Raisin in the Sun, I feel like I had to read it in school, but what? Um, tell me about the play. What, what's it about? Oh, it's about a family in, the, in Chicago, in Southside Chicago, who are inheriting some money um, from the passing of the, the elder father, and they have a really amazing choice to make. Like, what do we do with all this money, this free fall, and, and it can change their lives. And so the whole play is about the difference in what everybody thinks about what they should do with the money. Um, and, and we kind of see the real, what's really interesting about the time period. So this took place in the 1950s, as far as the play it was written in 1959. And, you know, not a lot of black families own property, so they, you know, the mother wants to own a property and she decides to move into a white neighborhood. And so there's a lot of interesting discussions that happen throughout the play because of her choice. Why doesn't it sound like a day has, has changed? You don't have to say the 1950s. Talk to me about why this still resonates to current audiences. I know, it's so interesting, right? Like there's so many things that are still being talked about today as far as, of gentrification of neighborhoods and, and black folks feeling comfortable moving into new neighborhoods. But also there's a lot of conversation in this show about um, what's the right role for women. And I think that's so interesting too. We st we're still talking about today, you know, um, what is the role of women and how they make decisions. And if you think about it, let's be true. <laughs> like women have been ruling the world since the beginning of time. Yes. This, is not, this is not <laughs> something new, right? <laughs> Who um, run the world? But, <laughs> but what's interesting about the fact that the themes are still resonating today is why I gravitated to the work. I was so excited about A Raisin in the Sun because to your point, you know, um, there's still some conversations between black and white, um, between genders that are still happening today that were, you know, that were beginning in the 1950s and through the 60s. Okay, and so Raisin in the Sun was, uh, you're just piggybacking off what you said, is the first play written by a black woman to be produced on Broadway. So why, why choose this for this season here? Well, yeah, I, you know, this is the season at Theater Memphis that we, you know, decided, I think, and, and I, I give that credit to the selection committee and to Debbie Lish, the executive director, for seeing this vision of thinking about celebrating women. Um, and, and if you think about how important the contribution of black folks and, and really this story in beginning some of the civil rights movement conversations, um, Lorraine Hansberry, who wrote the play and won the Pulitzer Prize for this work, she connected with, um, with a lot of our heroes from the civil rights movement, including um, Langston Hughes, who she wrote this play and, and actually called him and, and wrote him and, and got to meet him because she loved his poem about, uh, you know, what happens to uh, a raisin in the sun is, a, you know, is the dream deferred. And she, she loved, loved, loved civil rights. Um, in fact, she, you know, this story is a little bit autobiographical a little bit. She actually, her father tried to buy a house in Chicago and he was not allowed to move into the house that he that he bought in Chicago in this all white neighborhood. And so the story resonated truly with her. And like I said, she spent a lot of her time with a lot of the civil rights movement activists in the 1960s post this work. So this is, this is such an integral piece of, of literature, but more importantly, why it's important for us is to celebrate the woman that wrote it as well as the women characters. Wow, I, I know we have less than a minute left, but I do want to touch on how long Theater Memphis has been around. What is it, 103 years? Whoa, oh talk about what makes you a standout on top of that. Oh my gosh, Theater Memphis is just one of the best places to, to work into. And really, if you think about our whole theater community, it's 
you know, Theater Memphis is one of the beacons of it, but the whole theater community, the local community has so many rich diversity options for folks, so many options for people to see shows. And what I love about working at Theater Memphis the most is the artistic quality. When I think about the set that Jack Nettle Yates has put together for Raising in the Sun, it's going to blow your mind away. I, I just simply said I wanted if these walls could talk. <laughs> And what we got is yeah. probably one of the most beautiful sets I've ever seen. And so that level of artistic excellence at Theater Memphis is just unparalleled. Nicole Northington's light, Jason Eschafan's sound, it's just amazing. Kind of. Okay, and it's running from Sunday to, I know like, we ran out of time, but I have to tell people what, yeah. how long. Yeah, okay. it's, 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 well, weather permitting, <laughs> um, so take, take, please come to our website at theatermemphis.org to make sure of the opening day. Okay, okay. So 21st to February 4th, weather permitting. Jared Johnson, thank you so much, Theater Memphis. And next time, I hope that I can see you in person. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to give you a hug. Yes, thank yes. you so much uh, for doing this. Uh, God bless you. Thanks. All right.